Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Horror on Wheels. Uh, I'm G, and I'll be hosting the episode today. So we're just a couple hours away from heading over to Sydney Mines for the Myers House My Bloody Valentine on-set experience. I'm so excited. I love My Bloody Valentine. I love that it was filmed like 20 minutes where I live, and a lot of the original locations are still there. They've changed, obviously, in the past like 40 years or so, but they're, they're still there, and I think that's really cool. And it's really awesome that something like this is coming to where I live because we don't usually have a whole lot of horror events going on like ever. So I'm super excited. Uh, Peter Cowper is there today as like a special guest and he's doing a Q&A and some signings and stuff. So I'm going to take you with me and do a little bit of coverage as the best I can. Today is completely sold out so there's going to be a ton of people there and I'm super super excited for it. So let's go! Okay, so let's let's talk about the Onset Cinema, My Bloody Valentine experience. Um, Saturday, which was the day that Peter Cowper was there, was an absolute dream event. He is such a nice, sweet guy, and everyone running it was also really, really nice too. Um, so we started out with a walking tour of the filming locations in Sydney Mines, um, which is really cool because there were spots that I didn't like know were filming locations. Um, my first Valentine's with my boyfriend, um, he got me a Blu-ray copy of My Bloody Valentine because I didn't own a physical copy, and he drove me around to all the shooting locations in Sydney Mines, and that was our first Valentine's Day together. So doing the walking tour together and like seeing all those spots was really special to me, and he also grew up there, um, so I'm sure that was like really cool for him too to get to see that. Um, yeah, so I'll insert some footage of the walking tour. Um, I apologize for the audio, it was super windy and cold out and I shot it on my iPhone, so it's not gonna be great quality, but better than nothing. Uh, Peter Cowper did the walking tour with us too, which was a lot of fun, because we sort of, we were sort of like sticking by him through it, because um, he was dropping some insider info um, on stuff. He's like, oh yeah, I remember doing this here, and this and this and this, and he's like, oh, that house has like hearts on the shutters, and we were like, oh my God, it does. Oh, it was just, it was so, so awesome. It was such a good, like, walking tour, minus the cold. It was absolutely freezing out. Um, by the end of the walking tour, I, like, couldn't move my mouth, because that's how cold it was, that, like, my lips had frozen. So if I wanted to talk, I had to talk like this to give my mouth time to move, because it was so cold. <sighs> decorated. Mabel's decorated community, uh, committee did. <laughs> um, but yeah, they had, uh, you know, banners. Uh, I think they had four down the streets. And if you look closely, they have, they have lights, Valentine lights, but I don't think they were ever turned on in the production, which would have kind of been cool. But they had, um, all the poles decorated. And, uh, and this one right here is the main drag, and it was decorated to the nine. Before she comes out and she says, oh, down to here. <laughs> yeah. here looking that way so uh, the valentine's banner would have been hanging right here the legion is just off uh, off of the screen freaking mind-blowing so I've been doing this for a long time and it's pretty amazing what changes and what doesn't obviously the siding is now has, has now been changed they added a uh, wind barrier a wind barrier for the door this railing is the exact same railing <laughs> And this wall here, the 
This is original as well. You can see this up and down all over the film. So here. So this is the railing right there. I don't have the picture of the of this, but there. Um, so cool. Yeah. And what's also cool, if you look to the, the neighbors here, that big window, um, that house is just like it was in, uh, pretty much in the movie. Um, it kind of still has the old siding on it. I don't know if that's original. Uh, but you can clearly see that big beautiful window um there was a big building here so the camera one of the right there on the other side of the street and you can see this curve clear as day from the other side of the street um, so this is where the camera was and then this is the street with the big heart it would have been right here facing this way and there's a there's a yellow house and another, another white house you can see those right here they're all still there so when when the guys get off at the at the mine, they come zooming down here, uh, one by one, and this is kind of our introduction to the town. We've been right here at this very spot, um, and like Peter just mentioned, uh, uh, I, I I didn't know where the junkyard specifically was. It's it's kind of hard to find on the internet and stuff like that, and all the research. Um, but this was the junkyard right here behind us. Yeah. So, yeah. That's where they, you know, hung out. Lots of more pent up energy and fighting took place in there. Um, do you, do you, do you, do you. After TJ takes Sarah to the bluffs, um, there's a little moment. Hey. <laughs> We're doing a My Bloody Valentine tour. Well, Marty's, uh, I told one of them, I think, them yesterday. The uh, thing was down there, the watch plant and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Were you, were, you, were you living in town when it was filmed? I've been here when, uh, ever since uh, they had it. <laughs> do you remember anything specifically, like, when they filmed? When they were down there, yes, I do. <laughs> what do you remember? When they... <laughs> He's right here. This guy. Thank you for coming out. <laughs> Thank you for coming out and saying hello. Uh, Pew's got a thing going on tonight, haven't you? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, good luck at it. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Have a good Thank you. you. are she's walking right down here you can see this house as clear as day in the, in the back room when she's walking right here she's like what am i gonna do uh, and it has like the eerie music and it's, sh it's shot from the perspective of someone possibly following her so when they ripped us off from halloween it's very it's just like um sheriff brackett and 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 Lori, but she turns around runs right into uh to the chief and all we see is a light and it's supposed to make you think that it's the minor light but it's really uh the chief shining his flashlight into her face right here behind us but yeah this would have been the laundry mat from the film and I'm sure you guys being my bloody Valentine fans this is 
one of my favorite scenes in the entire movie took place right here at this building right behind us. So, hear that. So there was a little bit of downtime in between when the walking tour ended and the rest of the event started. Uh, so we went and got some supper. Uh, and then we showed up to the event and we picked up some of our items. Um, so first off, there was a little Valentine's card you could get. So it's like stamped with Happy Valentine's Day on the outside. And this is the design on the card. And this is the back. Which is really, really cute, and I love that they put like the date and stuff of the event on the bottom. Uh, I think that's really special. I love little like keepsakes like this, so I'm really happy that I got that. Um, another one of the things that we bought was a signed chocolate box by Peter Cowper. Um, I haven't eaten any of the chocolates in it. Um, the people that organized it are from the US, so I don't know if these chocolates like cross the border or anything. So it'll, it'll be interesting if I want to try them someday, but I don't know, I'm picky about chocolate, I'm weird. But it's a nice keepsake to have this, I'm very, I'm very glad I do. Um, so we got some stuff signed by Peter Cowper, he was signing stuff uh, for like 20 bucks and half of it was going to the Sydney Mines Food Bank and half of it was going to the Legion building that it was hosted at, which was like a really sweet thing to do to like sit and like sign and take pictures with people all night and not take a cent from it. Like I really, really admired that. I thought it was like a really great thing to do. So I got my VHS tape signed and I got it personalized to me, um, which basically means I could never try and like resell it for more because it's addressed to me. I doubt there's many other people out there with the name G that would want this. Um, but I don't know, maybe. Um, and then my boyfriend got the Blu-ray he got me for our first Valentine's Day signed. He got it addressed to the both of us. Um, when we were up there talking to Peter, um, my boyfriend had mentioned that our first Valentine's Day we did, we drove around and stuff and yada yada yada. And he was like, oh, like how long have you two been together? And I was like, oh, like it was just two years, like last week as in the last, basically the two weeks ago now, but it was one week ago, the day of the event. <laughs> So, if you notice, there's two little heart, uh, exclamation marks, because we've been together for two years when we told them that. Um, and then they had merch for sale as well. Um, they had some of, like, the, the Onset Cinema shirts and stickers and stuff. But they had shirts made for this event, so I had to get my hands on one, because I don't actually own a My Bloody Valentine shirt, and it's one of my favorite slasher movies, so I, I bought it. Um, so it's got this on the front, Welcome to Valentine Bluffs. And then the back... Roses are red, violets are blue, one is dead and so are you. Onset Cinema, My Bloody Valentine, Sydney Mines in Nova Scotia, February 2023. Welcome to Valentine Bluffs. Um, I've, I've worn this shirt like three times since I bought it. Uh, I love it. It's an awesome shirt. 
very, very cool. Um, but yeah, thank you guys sincerely. Um, thank you guys so much sincerely for being here. Um, my heart, my little black heart. Um, thank you so much. Um, so my name is Kenny Cameron, and, and I am literally on set seven. Thank you. Well, it's been 43 years since I've been back here. And uh, bring out his newsletter, I, I was a kid in Dartmouth. My mom uh, met my dad, who was in the Canadian Navy. He was a petty officer in England, in London. So they somehow got me, I don't know. <laughs> and here I am, like 43 years later. It was like uh, toward the bottoms, as we say in French. Um, yeah, so after the film, uh, think of all the questions that you want, and uh, we'll be more than happy to answer for you, you know, how the film was made, different scenes, uh, what went into them, and my involvement in them. So um, enjoy the show, and I'd like to thank the Legion, because, you know, my dad spent many a, many a night at the Legion. <laughs> I don't know what he was doing. <laughs> Take it away. Uh, Peter also did a Q&A after the movie. Let me pull up my notes from that. Um, so here's just a couple things I jotted down and remembered uh, from the Q&A. So um, first off, when we screened the movie afterwards, he told us in the audience that this is the first time he's seen the movie with an audience since it came out in 1981. So it's been like 42 years since the movie came out that he's seen it with an audience. So that was very cool and a very special experience. It's also the first time he had been back in Nova Scotia since then. Um, so I think it was a very special event for him as well as everybody that came to it. Um, so the scene with him and Sylvia in the showers where the miners like taking her to like go stab her head onto one of the shower heads, um, that he actually used, Peter Cowper was operating the Steadicam on that. Um, and he says it was the first Canadian production to use a steady cam, so I'm going to take his word for it, uh, which is super cool. Um, and then also the way that that scene worked to have Sylvia move so slowly, he had like, like you know on a horse, like the stirrups you put your feet in when you get on the saddle? He had those on like his pants or whatever. So she was able to like stand there and he was able to like do that very smoothly and stuff. Um, and I think what he said when they choreographed it, they choreographed it like a ballet. Um, which was, which is just a really cool movie fact to know. I feel like I learned so much about this movie that I didn't know, which is really cool. Um, we got some exciting news that there's a sequel script being written right now by George Mahalka, uh, and it's five eighths of the way done. Uh, Peter said he had read a bit of it and was really excited. Is it a sequel? Really? Yeah, it's, uh, you'll, you'll never ever ever guess who the killer is. <laughs> and he's invited all the people who I didn't kill <laughs> different characters in the sequel. But the thing of it is, is that um, Paramount owns the rights to it, yeah. and they have first approval, and they also have, you know, we don't want to do that. That's why that uh, 3D thing got, got filmed. Yeah. They, they gave the go-ahead for that. So, um, <clears throat> when was it? Oh, just before COVID, um, my wife and I went to Italy. We have some business interests over there. And George was in uh, Budapest, in Hungary. And so we dropped over and stayed with him for three uh, three days. And he uh, he let me in on a few of the, his ideas for a uh, sequel. He was doing uh, a show like Game of Thrones, set in 1260 uh, AD in Hungary. Uh, and he was very busy with that, but now he's finished. He's back in, outside of Toronto, so, uh, I think he's probably working on his script. Yeah. All right. So yeah, all in all, it was an amazing event. A great two days, um, like Saturday and then Valentine's Day. It was just, it was so awesome. Uh, there's not many movies shot where I live, especially horror movies. This is basically the only horror movie shot in Cape Breton that was like pretty big. There's one other one, Legend of the Psychotic Forest Ranger. Doesn't really have the same sort of following as this movie does. Um, in terms of like iconicness and stuff. So it's really cool to have this sort of once in a lifetime opportunity to 
do this type of thing and I think the organizers were really excited about it too. Uh, we also went on Valentine's Day for dinner and a movie, um, but I didn't take any footage there because it was Valentine's Day and I just sort of wanted to celebrate it with my beloved and not have my phone out being like... Being respectful, being a good girlfriend. Yeah, I'd love to see Sydney Mines do something for like the 50th anniversary of the movie. Like even if they just screen it, that'd still be really cool. Um, but yeah, this was, this was such an amazing event. I'm so happy I made it to like both days because uh, we actually got a really bad snowstorm on Valentine's Day, but I cannot commend everyone involved enough for putting on such a spectacular event that was so special to so many people. Um, so if you liked this video, make sure to like it and subscribe. Uh, let me know down in the comments if you watched My Bloody Valentine this Valentine's Day. I know it was a couple days ago now, but if you did, let me know. Um, and I will see you in the next video. Stay groovy.